Yo, what's going on everyone? Zhunter115 here, back with another Call of Duty Zombies video. And I normally do not make videos like this, y'all know me, but there has been so much divide in the COD Zombies community, which is nothing new of course, but with Black Ops 6 and COD Next, this has definitely amplified to a level that we have seen very few times in the past. So in this video, I want to go over some talking points discussing the main concerns people are expressing also give my thoughts on them and offer some solutions to please everyone. So starting off with the main argument, this does not look like zombies. Uh, where do I even begin with this? I understand both sides, of course. For one, there is a side that say, this is zombies. You kill zombies, you have a box, you have a pack of machine, you have the gobble gums. So how does this not look like zombies, right? But there's the other side, which is the side that I lean more into. And it says that it looks like multiplayer. Recently, I seen this image circulating of a side by side comparison of Black Ops 3 multiplayer with Black Ops 3 zombies. And then you have Black Ops 6 multiplayer and Black Ops 6 zombies. And yeah, you can definitely see that concern there. And I agree. In Black Ops 6, zombies and multiplayer look the same. But here's the thing that is just for Liberty Balls. Like, come on, y'all, we have two maps on launch. If we don't like the way Liberty Falls looks, then simply play Terminus. Simple solution. There are other things that make it not look like zombies, which are basically covered in later points. So let's just move on with that. Next, I want to go over the HUD argument. It's clear that the HUD is meant to appease to the Warzone slash multiplayer community. I mean, that's obvious. There's no doubt about that. However, I do miss the old custom HUDs that each zombie map had. Even the Black Ops 4 HUD, as ugly as it was, had more of a zombies identity than what we have for Cold War. Like, that's just facts. That being said, remember, you'll be able to fully customize the HUD. So fingers crossed, hopefully, the HUD customization options will have presets that allow us to have more zombie-like HUDs. The game's not out yet, guys, and we still have DLCs to come. It's definitely a possibility. But let's move on from that talking point, and let's talk about one of the things that I really, really don't like about this game, and I did not like in Cold War. I think a lot of people are with me, it's the Wonder Fizz. Man, don't even get me started with that. The Wonder Fizz has basically ruined perk machines. You can't tell me otherwise. Like, tell me, what is the point of even going to the perk machine locations if you have the Wonder Fizz available and you can get any perk you want? Like, seriously. However, I don't want to just complain, I want to offer solutions. So here are some changes that I would love to see. Number one, they can make the Wonder Fizz give you random perks like they used to. We can also combine that randomization with possibly a perk limit, which is honestly highly unlikely, but even that just, just a randomization of perks would be a great addition to it. Or number two, they can increase the cost of each perk if you want to get it from the Wonder Fizz. Imagine, I go down, now I have options. Should I run around the map to each perk location? Or should I maybe spend an extra 750 points on each perk and just get them directly from the Wonder Fizz? That would be a good solution. Or another solution would be my third option. Each time you buy a perk, the cost of the perks increase at the Wonder Fizz machine. Like I'm saying, these solutions, in my opinion, would make the Cold War slash Wonder Fizz machine still great while maintaining the usefulness of perk machines. Next up, we got to touch on something very, very important, and that is loadouts. We had them in Cold War. They're back. A lot of people did not want them back. But of course, they are back and we got to deal with it. This is to appease, of course, again, the Warzone and multiplayer community. And that's fine. I thought loadouts were cold at first. But as soon as I started seeing the issues with it in Cold War, I wasn't a big fan of them. So my issue with those is not that it makes the game easier. That's not my main problem with it. My main issue that hurts zombies at its core, that it ruined the mystery box for me. What is the point of hitting the mystery box? when I'm spawning in with a loadout weapon. Of course, here come the comments. Just use a pistol for your loadout. That's a whole other discussion that I'm not going to get into it because I'm going to speak for like 10 minutes. I do want to offer a solution though because I do not want the box to be useless. How about box weapons drop at least two tiers above your loadout weapon? So if you upgrade your loadout weapon to tier two, hitting the box will give you tier four weapons. And that's, I know, that's a little bit of a crazy change. Of course, there was a super easter egg in Cold War, which made you drop with tier four upgrade, upgraded loadout weapons, which was horrible in my opinion. That was so broken. But anyway, uh, I mean, that's highly unlikely, of course, that that's going to happen. Uh, it would be, but I, th I think it would be cool. 
Or here's another solution. We can limit the amount of attachments we can use on our loadouts. Then remember, we have weapon kits coming back. So with weapon kits, you can have a fully loaded out weapon that you can get from the box or the wall and your loadout weapon, maybe just a couple of attachments on it, maybe just one attachment. Uh, I think Treyarch should do something like that. And that's, that's a pretty good solution, I would think. Or here's the final solution for this, which I think is the best one. And correct me if I'm wrong, leave down your opinion about this solution in the comments. We can have a system where you do not spawn in with your loadout weapon, but rather you earn it in the game like you would a wonder weapon, you know? So this solution, of course, it's again, very unlikely to be implemented because of course they want us to spawn in with the loadouts for Warzone and multiplayer community. But in my opinion, that would be the best solution. Anyway, moving on, we're going to talk about armor and boy, oh boy, this one is, oh man, I was not a fan of Cold War armor, especially because you had to go to the machine and use a menu to repair it and upgrade it. That was horrible. I think with Black Ops 6 Zombies, it's awesome. You could buy it from the wall. My issue is replating. Please, Treyarch, do not make us replate. Por favor. Anyway, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you used to have shields. Yeah, but shields, you would have to find the parts, build them, and then you'll just cover your back. Like you have a shield on your back. It makes sense. You have a shield. Zombies that will try to hit you in the back couldn't hit you because hitting your back, right? But anyway, that's not what I'm going to go over. I'm not here to say that having armor makes it easier. Sure it does, but I don't really care about that. What I hate is manually plating, like I said. So how do we make this better? I have plenty of solutions for this. Uh, number one, we can add a repair station with no menu, similar to replenishing your shield in older titles. Number two, we can add a perk augment that replenishes our shield after doing a certain thing, whatever they come up with. Kind of like Cold War's Frenzy Guard. Uh, which replenish your shield or your armor every time you activated it. So I, I thought that was pretty good, except we all use Ether Shroud or Ring of Fire or something, right? Anyway, or number three, which in my opinion is the best change, implement a way to replenish all plates at once instead of applying them one by one. And of course, that could go back to the second solution I offered where um, you get an augment, a perk augment. It could be done as a perk augment or I mean, whatever they want to do, but that would be great. Imagine just doing it once. Also, the change in animation would do wonders. Uh, I don't know if you guys have played Halo. When you apply overshield on that game, your character just kind of grabs it and like hits his chest with it. I think something like that will make it feel more zombies instead of just like applying it like you're playing Warzone and running around sliding, you know, I, I think that would be a great change. But anyway, let's move on from that. Uh, that's definitely a good quality of life change that hopefully they implement. Next point is weapon tiers. This is probably the toughest to go over. Uh, even offering a solution is hard. I think weapon tiers basically ruin the pap machine in some sense. And also, I mean, we don't have double tap anymore, which is, it's kind of sad, right? Like one kind of, okay, maybe it could be done solution would be making pack a punching automatically increase your weapon tier. I know that would make tier upgrading basically useless in a sense. So I don't think this is going to be implemented to be honest. It's just really hard to find a middle ground with this one. So either, I mean, we have two options. They either get rid of weapon tiers, which ain't happening, or we're stuck with them, which is where we're at right now. I'm just going to be honest. I have no real solution for this, but I would love to see double tap make a comeback. Maybe just bring back double tap 1.0, have a little rework. We can have increased fire rate, increased ammo count, more bullet penetration, higher damage against elites. I don't know. Things like that. That's something I would love to see. Moving on to my last point I want to cover today is alternate ammo types. The fact that they are no longer on the pack a bunch machine. Like, what is going on? Like, on one hand, I think it's nice because there's no pack a punch machine menu, which I hated in Cold War. But on the other hand, it does feel off. So I'm 50 50 on that change. However, let's take a look at this instead. The alternate ammo upgrades are now on the same machine as the weapon tier upgrade station. And this I do not like. Let's make it feel more zombie like. So I offer this solution. Instead of having these AATs on the same machine, we instead implement like a little lab machine similar to the one with the KT4 upgrade on Zetsubo. Super underrated map, by the way. Make it have little pots or whatever. It doesn't have to be little pots. Maybe like just like a little section with electricity, a little section with like poison for the brain rot, stuff like that. And then you just walk up to it, pay whatever you need to pay, 
and just add that to your weapon. I think that would be so zombie-like and so much better. Like, if they want to make it easy for multiplayer and Warzone people, you don't even have to make us do a quest to find that. Like, just have that on the map. I think that would be a great addition. Those little changes like that that make it feel unique to any other mode is something that goes a long way. So that was it. That was all the points I wanted to talk about. There are other things I didn't comment on on this video, like things like when you spawn in, the way it looks, the death screen, loading screen, zombies menu, bunch of little non specifically gameplay related things that could use a zombies touch. Not going to get into any of those things, but I would definitely like to see an old school zombie touch to those. But anyways, Z Nation, that was it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed me rambling today. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe, little fellas. Also, follow me on Twitch, where I will stream a lot, and on Twitter, where I will tweet a lot. Both links in the description. Also, join my Discord. I'll like that as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.